I wonder if dentists get an insight into human psychology more than many people do, maybe more than some psychologists. It's something quite intimate about dentistry. What is the secret, the main secret of success? What is it? Success. <laughs> Contrive small successes. So success is not all absolute um, being rich or being poor. It's about getting that surge of dopamine activity in your feel-good network in your brain which makes it more likely you'll win in the future. And it could be quite a small success in any, according to anyone else, but it could be a big success for you. And that is a fundamental factor. People who have very ambitious goals and people who are very low goals in life tend to do on average more poorly than people who have intermediate goals. Many of the chemical messengers in the brain, including dopamine, they have an inverted U-shaped curve. Too little in your brain under functions, particularly the frontal lobes of your brain involved in thinking and uh, planning, decision-making, impulse control, and too much in the under function. So people can choke. People who want something too much can end up not getting it because there are, there are the very mental capacities needed to get it are interfered with by too great an influx of dopamine. So there's also a kind of biochemical reason for this intermediate goal. Beware of the curse of genetic fatalism. Hiding the ladder means that the parent doesn't, conceals from the child the randomness and the effort and the failures and the practice that were the true ingredients, along with a bit of talent maybe, the true ingredients of the success. Many successful people hate to think that it's not some God-given uniqueness that has made them this way as opposed to the mucky fortunes of life. The curse of genetic fatalism is to disempower yourself from getting success by believing that there is some entity over which you have no control which is determining your behavior or your emotions. The worst thing you can tell a child is you're bright. Don't tell them you're bright. You know, tell them you're hardworking. Tell them you're, that was great persistence. But it can, it can, it can really um, be a burden on them to tell them they're bright for all the reasons I've explained. If you take Chelsea, when they play away, if they're given a red away strip versus a black away strip, they'll be more likely to win having got the red strip. Take birds, some of whom have red breasts and some of one species and some don't. The red breast ones tend to be the dominant ones that kick the others out of the way to get their food in the, in the bird table. But if you just take one of the poor wee ones and paint their, their chest red, they become. <laughs> and what about teeth? <laughs> Don't mean red teeth, but big teeth, good teeth, white teeth. I don't know, but it's a possibility, it's a hypothesis. <laughs> People imitate each other all the time, unconsciously mimic each other. And to the extent that people have confidence in their facial features, then a smile will elicit a smile, and that's, a, that's going to be a, a positive feedback loop. <laughs>